Alrighty, so you are into 3D printing and you want to create your own designs, right? But maybe you're brand new to it. Maybe you find the Fusion 360 a bit too complex. Maybe you don't have access to Autodesk Maya or anything like that. So what you want is something that's simple and something that's free. And that's what Autodesk Tinkercad is, right? You just go to tinkercad.com, you set up an account, which is free, you use an email address, set up an account, and you will get access. Now, once you're in Autodesk Tinkercad, you have basically three main options. You can go and set up code blocks. We're not gonna deal with that right now. You can set up uh, electronic uh, component circuits. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna select 3D. And within 3D, we want to create a new design. So I'm just gonna click on create. 3D design and I will get a workplace or a work mat if you will. Now how do I rotate this around? Right click and drag, right? So if I move my mouse while I'm uh, pushing down the right uh, button then that will happen. And as I do so you can see in the top left corner here that we're looking at the top if I move it like this front left that kind of thing yeah but we don't have anything on our work mat just yet. Now, uh, when it comes to settings down here, the snap grid is set to one millimeter. So each tiny square here is one millimeter on this guy. Now, maybe you don't wanna work with millimeters. Maybe you wanna work with inches or whatnot. Okay, click on settings. You're gonna go in here and instead of millimeters, you're gonna select inches if you like. Okay, I'm gonna set it back to millimeters. And we're going to uh, make sure that's default. Uh, there you go. And we're going to close. Okay, so now that we know that, how do I get uh, an object here to start with? Well, let's say I want to start with a cube. Okay, now I got this one and that one. What's the difference? The one that has this line pattern on it is to make holes. Now, if I click this one, I can drag it onto my grid space here. And if I release it, I now have a solid option and a whole option. So I can still change that here, right? There you go. I'm leave it on solid right now. I can change the color if I like, and I can also change the transparency if I want to, right? And I can go into custom if I want to make a very special color or even go to multicolor if I want. But for now, this is fine. So I got this uh, selected, right? Now, how do I get close to that object? Let's say I have multiple objects going on, right? And I'm zoomed in on this guy, but I want to go and check out this guy. Well, what I do is I make sure it's selected and I hit F on the keyboard and it will go and zoom in on that guy, right? Okay, now let's say I want to delete this. I'm just gonna select it, hit delete, select, hit delete, and let's focus on this one after frame in we got all these symbols up here <clears throat> excuse me we got this guy right here that will allow us to rotate it in that direction rotate in this direction and rotate in that direction let's say i want to move it just left click and move it around and as i do so you will see on the grid that will indicate what the displacement is based on the original position which is kind of neat okay and I'm in the control Z to go back. And then we have all these squares right here. Now the white square will allow me to basically freehand change that skill. Okay. And as I do so, you will see an indicator of the, uh, the dimensions. So 49 and 31, that kind of thing. I can do the same moving up. I can do that. I can use the black ones. So I will just move that entire side. But what if I want to scale everything in uh, the original ratio? What I would do is click on it and select one of the corners or one of these, but as I do so, hold down the shift key, all right? So now if I scale, everything will scale according to the original ratio, okay. Now what else? Let's say I want to move it up from the grid. I'm gonna take that little cone uh, symbol up here and I can use that, right? Okay, let's say I want to combine uh, objects. I'm gonna take a sphere and I'm gonna grab that sphere and I'm gonna place it right here, okay? Now, um, let's say I wanna move it in and I wanna move it 
inside right there. Now, basically right now you got two objects that are kind of touching, but what I can do is I can group them. So I can uh, select it both like so. And when I do that, I get the option up here that says group, and you can also use control G. As I group that, it's now one object and it takes on the same transparency and that's kind of neat, right? Now, the thing is, if that sphere were, um, uh, if that sphere had this pattern, the whole pattern, and I can show that by doing it once again, I'll take this guy, I'll put it in here, all right? Now, if I group these two, let's move it in a little bit then he will know to cut a hole. So again, I'll drag select the whole thing. And because this is now a whole symbol, not a whole symbol, a whole symbol, yeah, I'm gonna go and group that again. And once I do that, let's make sure it grouped these two. Uh, what am I doing wrong here? Oh, I didn't click it, all right, okay. There you go. So now you see that that shape is a cutout. That's pretty neat, right? All right, what else? How about text? You can go in here, you can create any text you want. Flip that around. We're gonna call this uh, sample. Let's go in here. Sample, you can go in here, you can change the font if you want, you can go and change the height if you want, you can bevel the edges if you like, and you can change the segments as well, which is not really relevant in this sample here, but you can, all right? Alrighty, what else? Uh, let's see here, let's say, let me get rid of this. Let's say you want to change the bevel edges of an object. You're going to take a cube, you're going to put it in right here. As soon as you click, you will have a bunch of options here. So first I'm going to hit F to zoom in on this guy, and then I'm going to change the radius. As I do so, you see that the corners are rounded off, even to the point where it's a complete sphere, okay? So you can do that. You can change the steps as in how smooth it is. So you would call that uh, edges in, in the 3D world, I would say. Then you have the length that you can change. You can change the width. So you have a lot of flexibility here. Now, let's say we want to put a hole in the sky. We're going to take this. We're going to put it right here. I want to scale that down. So I'm going to hold down my shift key, make it a bit smaller. Then I'm going to push it through. Let's have a look. I'm going to move that up a little bit like so. And with these two selected, I'm going to go up to the group option. And there you have it. Now I got an object with a hole in it. So yeah, this is a super cool program. Let's see. Uh, let's say I want a ruler. Okay. So I'm going to put a ruler right here. And then when I take my object and I decide to move it around, I can see measurements based on that ruler position. Okay. I can even go and create a work plane. And when I do that, I can put it in a vertical position. So if I then, for example, change anything, I can see what that uh, position is relevant to that. All right. If I click it again and click here, I'm going back to the original one. Okay, let's see what else. Um, I think that is a lot to begin with, uh, but it will allow you to work on all sorts of things, yeah? You can go in here, you can click on export, and then you can uh, export it, for example, uh, to use in Autodesk Fusion 360. You can use it for 3D printing. So for example, uh, click on STL file, and then uh, you can uh, export that, or even an SVG if you want to laser cut it. Okay, you can select one object, you can select everything in the design. Um, you can go and send it to your printer, uh, which is an option. And let's see what else. Um, let's say you want to go to your dashboard. Okay, so you're going to go here and it saves everything automatically. So there it is. And then from here, you can go into settings and you can delete it if you want. 
you can go in and uh, let's see what else you can duplicate it you can add it to a class you can do all sorts of very very cool things so yeah this is just a short introduction to tinkercad uh, if you haven't been using it just yet um, consider it it's a lot of fun and you can get up and running in no time okay so yeah that's it for this video thanks so much for watching Subscribe if you uh, enjoy this kind of thing and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye